Hi boys and girls, this is Jamie from Made My Art and Design Experience and I wanted to say congratulations on being the class of 2020 at Effie Bellows. Today I'm going to walk you step by step in creating this really cool commemorative panther plaque so that you'll always remember your time at Bellows and your graduation. So what I want you to do is prepare a surface that you can work on where you can make a mess. And I want you to make sure that you have some clothing on, uh, maybe an old t-shirt, an old pair of shorts, something that you won't mind if it gets paint on it because this paint will not come out of your clothes. I wanna go over the materials that were included in your kit and also some additional materials that you might need from home. So everybody received three different colors of paint, white, blue, and black. You have glue in your kit, that's the smelly one, two Q-tips, two different size paint brushes. You have this special sticker that says F.E. Bellows Class of 2020. That's what we're gonna put on. We're gonna give this little panther a neck tattoo at the end. And you should have a plate for mixing your colors. From home, what I want you to grab is a jar of water and some paper towels because as we paint this guy in, we wanna make sure our brushes are really nice and dry as we change the colors. You can put your glue and your Q-tips and the sticker to the side. We're not gonna use them until later. If you do have a blow dryer at home, this is gonna help with drying time. If you don't have one, it's okay. We can work without it. But if you do have one handy, it'll help you out. We're going to start first by filling in these small areas in the panther with Rymec Blue. So to mix that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bigger brush, we're going to use our white and our blue paint, and we're going to take three or four big scoops of white and we're going to put it right on our plastic plate. What I want you to do next is dip your brush just a little bit. And you can see on my paintbrush, I only have a little bit of blue. It is very strong. And you're gonna mix it into this white paint. And we're gonna mix until we have a good shade of that really cool Rhinec periwinkle blue color. So it looks like I need a little bit more blue. So I'm just gonna take a little bit Oop, my brush was really, had a lot of paint on it, so I'm gonna have to go again. There we go, so I'm gonna take a scoop and I'm gonna mix it up. Now you wanna try and contain all of your paint into one small pile. That's gonna prevent it from drying out too soon. We Once we get a good color, we don't wanna have to mix again. I feel like I need a little bit more white, just a little bit, but my brush right now has blue all over it. And we wanna make sure that we keep this white nice and clean. So what I want you to do, if you need to add more white to that, is you're gonna rinse your brush off. You're gonna make sure that all the color is out of it. You're gonna dry it off. And then you can take one more scoop out of here. And mix it up. There you go. That looks good to me. Perfect. So like I said before, I'm gonna kind of scoop this into a little pile so it doesn't dry out. And we're gonna be done with this big brush for now. So I'm gonna put it right in the water so that the paint doesn't dry out on our bristles. So everybody can take their smaller brush that was included in their kit and we're going to fill in everything except the eyes and the teeth. Now, I want to just show you guys close up, and I'll do this will be the first thing I fill in for you. Right here in between these two bottom teeth, that's blue, that's the lip. So we're going to fill that in blue. Now, because this is wood, it's going to be a little absorbent. So if you look at your panther and you feel as your paint dries, you need to add a second coat, you can fill in everything and then come back to it and do another coat.
All right, so that spot right there is done. And I'm gonna fill in everything else. Now when I'm painting, I like to go around the edges first if you have a bigger space. So for example, right here, I'm gonna try and do the edges before I fill in the center. And we're gonna use that same technique for when we're filling the black in after we get the blue. If you do go over these lines, don't worry about it because we're just gonna go over it with black and black's gonna cover that right up. And I want you guys to remember, as we get closer to the eyes, we're going to be mindful that we're not going to fill those in. Now you guys are gonna see me kind of flipping this panther around as I paint. That's so that I don't drag my finger or the side of my finger into any of this wet paint. So I'm gonna paint this guy over here. It kinda looks like a little teardrop. I'm gonna paint the eyebrow. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna paint the bridge of the nose over here. But I'm not going to fill that eye in. If you do accidentally fill the eye in, that's okay. You can go back over it with white after it's totally dry. So I'm going to turn it now. Maybe what I'll do is I'll fill in over here.
It actually looks like the paint is drying and the color is pretty opaque. That means that you can't see through it. So I actually feel pretty confident that I won't have to do another coat of this color. All right, so I'm not gonna fill that eye in. And the only thing I didn't do yet is that tongue on that side, but I'll come back to that once everything around it is dry. I'll do that tongue last. Now for these little tiny spaces, the best thing for you to do, instead of pressing your paintbrush down, you're gonna just use the tip of the paintbrush and pull the paint backwards. And over here, if you go, I, it's even hard for me to not go over the lines, so we are just gonna paint over those little corners with black once we get to that part. All right, now I'm just gonna go back over here. I'm gonna fill in the tongue before I move on to the white. Alright guys, 
So we have all of our blue filled in. What I want you to do is rinse off your small brush and then make sure that it's nice and dry and that all the blue is off of it. You might have to rinse it twice and you can twist it in your paper towels to make sure that it's nice and dry. And we're gonna go in with our white and we're gonna fill in the teeth and the eyes. If your blue is taking a long time to dry, that might be because your paint is a little too thick. So what you can do is you can go in with your paintbrush and you can just smooth those shiny thick lines out a little bit and it's gonna speed up that drying time for you. So again, as I go in and I paint the teeth and the eyes, you just wanna be mindful about where the side of your finger is. Make sure you're not dragging the paint if it's still wet. If you wanted to hit this with a blow dryer before you moved on so that all that blue is dry, go for it. Most of this blue is dry up here. So again, I'm outlining first before I fill in. You can see I'm getting the outside of the eye. The good thing about this acrylic paint is that it's very forgiving. So if any point you make smudges, once the entire thing is nice and dry, it could be in an hour, it could be tomorrow, you can just go back in and cover up whatever smudge you have. It might take one or two coats, but that's fine. So this white paint was super absorbent, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna give one more coat, even if it's still a little wet, it's fine. And as a reminder, I'm just using the tip of my paintbrush to do this. Once you have your eyes and your teeth filled in, you can rinse your brush. Make sure that all the white paint is off of it. And you're also gonna get your bigger brush back out of the water. Make sure that all the paint is out of it and that these are both nice and dry. Because we're gonna go and fill in the rest of this panther with black. Now, before you move on, if your paint is still really wet, this is a good time 
to blow dry. Now my paint is nice and dry on this side, so I'm gonna work from left to right, and hopefully by the time I get to the right side where the eyes are still pretty damp, it'll be a little bit more dry. What happens is if the paint is still wet around the edges and you're adding black paint around it, it's kind of just gonna turn into this gray color and we don't want that. So if you have a blow dryer, blow dry it. If you don't have a blow dryer, you can just, you can start going. And then again, you can, once this is entirely dry, you can go back in around the edges and it could be an hour, it could be tomorrow, whatever works for you. You can take your small brush and you can outline all of these blue areas first. And that's what I recommend to do. The reason that we do that is because it gives us an edge and a guideline, kind of like a coloring book. The coloring book has those lines so you know where to put the crayon, you know when to stop, you know when to start. What's so cool about this wood board is that those are already on there for us. So I am gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna do the outlines. Now this is something that you guys can practice, but when I am painting, I like to make one long stroke with my brush. That helps me to get my line straight. Now I can tell that my brush is kind of fanning out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse that black off, dry my brush, and I'm gonna twist it back into a point because that point is what's really helping you put these lines on very delicately around the blue parts. For these parts around the edge, when I, when I, as soon as I pull out my big brush, I'll probably fill those back in. And again, notice how I am twisting this panther around. And that's so I'm not making any smudges with the side of my finger. I have my palm the side of my palm anchored on the table while I do this. I'm gonna roll my brush out on my surface, but if you want, if it's easier, you can roll your brush out to get that point back on your paper plate. Now for this part, we're gonna go nice and slow. While this black is drying, before I get into the little creases, I think what I'll do is I'll come over here.
Now this face area is gonna be the hardest part, so we're gonna save that for the end. So I want you guys to see, I'm just doing the edge of the panther right now. Before we go in and we attack this face area. any big areas where there's a lot of extra space in the middle we can fill we can outline those as well Okay, so this side is a little bit more dry now. So I'm going to start outlining, but I think what I'm going to do really soon is I'm going to blow dry it. So that I can get those middle areas. Now I am going to give a disclaimer, just because we've blow dried it does not mean that everything is 100% dry, so you are going to have to be mindful of that. Alright. Okay, I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer.
All right, so now that this guy is a little bit more dry, I'm gonna keep going. I do wanna show you one thing. Let's see, I'll hold it up and I'll see if you can tell. There's some shiny areas on this panther still, even after I blow dried it, those parts are still wet. So you, you can do one of two things. You can either be very careful to avoid them with the side of your hand, or you can take your bigger brush and smooth them out. Very, very carefully. Now, once you do that, if you do pick up this brush again, the bigger one, you wanna make sure that you put it back in your water to wash it off. You don't want the paint to dry on the bristles. So here I go on the center. I see I got some black on my teeth, so I'll go over that at the very end, at the very end. Just a reminder that every so often you want to rinse your brush off and you want to twist it back into a point. 
Okay, boys and girls, now here comes the challenging point, but I trust that you guys will be able to do this. So we're gonna start getting into these little tiny areas. So I'm gonna start right in the middle because I can work from the top down and then I can flip it over and do the other part. So let's see, I'm gonna go around the teeth over here. Now for these little crevices where the, the teeth come together, I'm just using the very tip of my brush. If it's easier for you guys, you can use a Sharpie to fill in any spaces. Let me show you real quick. So if you can see right where my tongue, the point of this black part comes, there's still a little brown. If it's easier for you to wait for this to dry completely and then fill that in with a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, go for it. No harm. I'm going to fill it in with my brush, keeping in mind that I can always go over any of this black with two coats of uh, our blue mixture. Black is a little bit harder to cover up, but it is totally doable. Now we're gonna be super gentle in these little areas, but if you wanna use a Sharpie, go for it. I'm just using the tip of my paintbrush. this area while I'm over here. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna work on the top over here. I think I'm gonna start from the whiskers, although I do see right here, it's a little thick, so I'm just gonna smooth it out. Put my brush back in the water, make sure that the side of my arm is nice and dry. And I'm gonna do the whiskers now.
too much paint on my brush. So I'm gonna rinse it off. Almost done.
Phew. Okay, I did it. I outlined everything. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my bigger brush and I'm gonna fill in some of these bigger spaces with black. And I'm gonna be able to do that a lot quicker than using this small, tiny brush. But I'm still gonna work from left to right. And as a reminder, you wanna try and make sure that your paint is nice and smooth so that it dries faster because over in this area, that's where we're going to put our Effie Bellows sticker. So we need that to be 100% dry. So make sure that there's no big clumps or speed bumps of paint in that area. Now for some of these spaces, we're gonna go back in with our smaller brush, but we're gonna fill in whatever we can with the big brush. Once I get back into this area, I'm gonna use my small brush again, but I wanna allow it some time to dry. I can see our panthers starting to shape up. So as I start to fill in around the teeth and the mouth and the whiskers, I'm only gonna fill in those areas where my big brush fits. If there are small spaces where you risk going into that blue area, like, you can let me show you. Right over here, that's a spot I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna use my small brush for.
All right, for, so for these small spaces, I'm going to get my small brush out one more time. If it's easier for you, you can use a Sharpie. But we're almost done with this part. Right, and I'm just gonna go back into this area over here. Right over here. And our panther is complete. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go blow dry him and then we'll come back and we will work on the next step, which is putting this sticker on. Okay, boys and girls, I have blow dried my panther as best I could right now. There are a couple spots that I do want to go over after this entire thing is done and dry, but I'm going to ignore those for right now so that we can focus on the sticker. So everybody should have this little blue rectangle and it says Effie Bellows class of 2020. And we're going to very carefully peel the sticker off. I want you to go very slowly with this. So if you go too fast, you might rip it. There are some spots like around the two where you're gonna have to peel it off. We're just gonna go really slow and mindful as we pull this sticker up. Now, some of these letters like the B and the E and the O, they have little stickers in the middle of them, but we're not gonna worry about that just the second. I want you guys to be extra careful of these, uh, the little spaces in the S and the A. So you can see how slowly I'm going. Ta-da! Okay, got it. So now I'm gonna find the spot on the neck where I want this to go. I want this sideways. And then we're just gonna smooth it out. I actually see I have a little sticker still in there. I'm gonna peel it out. Yep, come on. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna, gonna rub my finger over it to smooth it out. All right, so what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna get your Q-tip and your glue. You're gonna just get a little bit of that glue on your Q-tip. And what I would recommend is kind of blotting it off on your uh, surface. And we're just gonna dab this glue over the letters. This is gonna help prevent the paint that we put over it from bleeding. And this glue dries pretty quickly. So we're just kinda gonna dab, 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 dab. I put too much glue, so I'm gonna just flip this over. Use the side of my Q-tip. I know this stuff smells really weird, but we're only gonna be using it for a few minutes. Okay. All right. So you can use this the side of your Q-tip, kind of smooth this out a little. We don't want to have anything that's too white. That means it's really thick. It's not going to dry. And then we're going to hang tight for a sec while this becomes clear. While this glue is drying, what you can do is you can take your small brush and you can go back into these areas that need touch-ups.
And like I said, it might need one or two coats. But this acrylic paint is very forgiving. And when you're done with those touch-ups, you can put your brush back into the water. This looks dry, so we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so we're going to take our white paint and our second Q-tip, and we're going to add white on top of that glue. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to dip it in, but we're going to kind of blot some of this paint off so it's not super thick. And we're just gonna dab right over the letters. We're gonna do one or two coats of that, but go over the whole thing first. That's a little too thick over there, but that's okay. You need to add more paint onto your Q-tip. Make sure that you blot it off. Again, we don't want it to be too thick. Okay, so now we're gonna go back over for a second coat. going to go in a circular motion. Maybe I'll go over it one more time. Just because black is a little bit harder to cover up. Maybe we'll wait just a second for this to dry. We don't want to blow dry this part because the plastic sticker will shrink. So while you're waiting, you can go back in. Multitasking here. We can fill in some of these black spots. If you want to use your Sharpie, you can do it. If you want to use the paint, you can. Most of this is dry on mine now, so. I'm just going to touch up while I'm waiting for that to dry.
guy. And then what we can do is gently peel this off. to be able to see. Now it probably is safer if you guys wait a couple minutes for it to dry. I've done this before so I for time's sake I'm just going right away. So there's our sticker. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my small brush. And I'm just going to dip the point of it. A little itty bitty amount of black. And I'm going to fill in on the B. On the E. on the A, just a little line. And if it's easier, you can also use the back of your paintbrush. I'll show you. Just to put a little dot. Just gonna touch up just a little bit over there. All right, guys, there you have it. Our Rye Neck Pride Panther, Effie Bellows, class of 2020. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you for your accomplishments. And teachers, thank you so much for your hard work, especially this last quarter, last half of the year. I know it's been a crazy time for everybody, but hopefully this is something that you can keep and it's gonna remind you of all the fun times you had at school. And I wish you all the best in middle school. Thank you for painting along with me today. If you have any questions or issues, you can email me, info at madeartstudio.com. That information is in the bags that were delivered to your houses. If you guys have anything you need to touch up, I would step away for this for about an hour and then come back, touch up whatever you need to. But I think he looks pretty cool. Please send pictures of your completed projects and enjoy your summer. Bye everybody.